Is Samsung planning to catch everyone off guard with an earlier launch of its next flagship phones? According to fresh reports, the Galaxy S26 series might break tradition and show up in December 2025 instead of early 2026. If this actually happens, it would be the first time Samsung pushes its premium lineup into the holiday season. And it's not just a calendar shift. It could be a move aimed directly at narrowing the time gap between its release and Apple's iPhone 17, which usually drops every September. This timing wouldn't be random. Behind this decision could be Qualcomm, the chipmaker responsible for powering Samsung's Ultra models. This year, Qualcomm is rumored to reveal its new Snapdragon 8 Elite 2 processor earlier than usual, likely in September instead of October. That small change could give phone manufacturers like Samsung just enough time to speed up development and launch new phones before the year ends. And with smartphone competition heating up, every week counts. There's also a clear reason for Qualcomm's early push. MediaTek, its biggest rival, is expected to unveil the Dimensity 9500 around the same time. Both chips will reportedly be made using TSMC's advanced third-generation 3-nanometer process. That's cutting-edge technology and being first to reveal and ship a product Using it means better visibility, stronger partnerships, and maybe even more market share. Qualcomm likely doesn't want to let that moment slip away. Samsung, on the other hand, has more than just chip schedules to think about. Releasing the Galaxy S26 series earlier would help the company stay fresh in people's minds right when the iPhone hype is in full swing. It would also let Samsung squeeze two flagship phone campaigns into one calendar year. The Galaxy S25 earlier in 2025, and then the S26 at the very end. That's an aggressive strategy, but it could work in their favor if they want to keep users constantly looking forward to their next release. Now let's talk about what kind of power we're likely to see in the Galaxy S26 Ultra. The Snapdragon 8 Elite 2 chip is shaping up to be a serious upgrade. Rumors point to new Pegasus CPU cores capable of reaching speeds up to 5 GHz. That's incredibly fast and should translate to noticeable improvements in day-to-day -day tasks gaming, and multitasking. The chip is also expected to support LPDDR6 RAM and feature the latest Adreno 840 graphics unit, which may be up to 30% faster than the current generation. In terms of structure, Qualcomm seems to be sticking to its successful formula. Two prime cores and six performance cores. The prime ones might hit up to 4.32 GHz, and there's talk of Samsung using an exclusive version of the chip that's slightly overclocked for even better performance. Overall, we're looking at around 25% more power, which is a decent leap for a single generation. So when will we start seeing phones running this chip? If the timeline holds, Snapdragon 8 Elite 2 powered devices could start appearing as early as October. That gives companies like Samsung the opportunity to lead the charge. And this time, Samsung might not be keeping the best hardware only in the Ultra model. While the Galaxy S26 Ultra will likely feature the Snapdragon on chip globally, the regular Galaxy S26 and S26 Plus could use Samsung's own Exynos 2600 processor in select markets, mostly outside North America. This strategy might allow Samsung to manage costs while still offering premium features where it matters most. For those looking to buy a new flagship smartphone, it's an exciting time, especially if Samsung really does move its launch to December. A faster chip, better performance, and an earlier release could make the Galaxy S26 lineup one of the most talked about releases of the year. If you want more updates like this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. We'll bring you all the latest as soon as more details surface. Samsung is stepping up its game in the mid-range smartphone market with the introduction of the Galaxy A30 sticks and A56. These new models bring several upgrades, particularly in the camera department. One of the biggest highlights is that they are the first Samsung mid-range phones to support 10-bit HDR video recording, a feature previously exclusive to flagship devices. This means users can now capture videos with richer colors and a wider dynamic range, making them look more professional. The front camera on both phones features a 12 megapixel sensor with an f2.0 aperture, allowing more light to enter the lens. This improves low light photography and enhances selfie quality. The most notable change is that these front cameras now support 4K video recording at 30 frames per second in 10-bit HDR, a significant step up from the previous Galaxy A35 and A55 models, which were limited to 8-bit recording. This upgrade results in better detail, improved color accuracy, and an overall smoother video experience. On the back, both the Galaxy A36 and A56 come with a 50 megapixel primary camera equipped with optical image stabilization, OAS, and phase detection autofocus, PDF. These features help reduce motion blur and ensure sharper images even in unsteady hands. The A36 includes an 8 megapixel ultrawide camera, 
while the A56 offers a slightly better 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, giving users more flexibility when capturing wide angle shots. Both models also come with a five megapixel macro camera, which is useful for close up shots, though some users might prefer a zoom lens instead. Samsung is clearly aiming to bring premium features to its mid range lineup, but one feature is still missing minus 4K video recording at 60 frames per second. While the current video quality is a major improvement, adding this capability in future models could help Samsung compete even more effectively with brands like OnePlus and Motorola. However, not all changes may be welcomed by users. One significant difference in these new models is the removal of the micro SD card slot. This means storage expansion is no longer an option and users must rely solely on the built-in storage. The Galaxy A36 and A56 come in two options, 128 gigabytes and 256 gigabytes. While this may be enough for many people, those who store a lot of media might find it limiting. Samsung does offer the Galaxy A26, which still includes a micro SD card slot and supports up to 2 TB of expandable storage, making it a viable alternative for users who prioritize storage flexibility. On the software front, these new devices launched with Android 15 and Samsung's latest One UI 7.0. This version introduces new features such as the Now Bar, customizable quick panel, a vertical app drawer, and an improved camera interface. Another notable addition is Google's Circle to Search feature, which is part of the broader Galaxy AI experience. Users can also take advantage of intelligent tools like Object Eraser, though it's unclear if they function as seamlessly as they do on Samsung's flagship models. Samsung has also committed to long-term software support for these devices. The Galaxy A36, A56, and A26 will receive six years of Android, One UI, and security updates, ensuring they remain secure and up-to-date for an extended period. For those opting for the Enterprise Edition of the Galaxy A56, the update cycle is extended to seven years. Another anticipated software improvement is seamless updates, allowing the installation of new software versions in the background without interrupting daily use. Overall, the Galaxy A36 and A56 deliver a strong mix of advanced features and a few compromises. The upgraded cameras, improved video recording capabilities, and long-term software support make them solid choices in the mid-range market. However, the removal of the micro SD card slot might be a downside for users who require additional storage. Despite this, these phones bring powerful hardware, enhanced user experience, and competitive camera features making them worthy options for those looking for a reliable and future-proof device. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. The images of the Pixel 10 Pro XL suggest that its design will closely resemble the Pixel 9 Pro XL with no major aesthetic changes. If the leaks about both the processor and design turn out to be accurate, some users may decide to skip upgrading this year and wait for the next generation instead. Many Pixel fans were hoping for a significant step forward but without noticeable performance gains or a fresh design, it might be harder to justify an upgrade. Of course, benchmarks and leaks don't always tell the full story. Google might have software optimizations planned that could enhance AI performance and efficiency. Real-world usage could paint a different picture, and Google may still have some surprises in store. However, if these leaks turn out to be true, the Pixel 10 might not deliver the leap forward that many had anticipated. Would you still consider upgrading to the Pixel 10 if the Tensor G5 doesn't show a significant boost in power? Share your thoughts in the comments. And if you found this update helpful, make sure to like this video and subscribe for more updates on the latest tech news.